Hello there, Ben Bowers, the Spirit Specialist, and I'm here today to talk to you about Heroes and Heretics, Smoke and Glory, Le Check from the Tobamori Distillery, 13-year-old. Catchy name, isn't it? Um, so I had this uh, for the first time on uh, the live stream with Vim PF when he hit uh, 10,000 subscribers. Uh, hopefully I can return the favor to him when I hit 10,000 subscribers. Like and subscribe, people. Please hit that button, smash that button, or whatever it is that you've got to do. Anyway, really, really liked it. Um, I've had a couple of the checks before that are on the shelf. You would have, might have seen those videos with the Sinclair series and the Connoisseur's Choice, but I absolutely love this. Love the check generally. Um, so uh, Heroes and Heroes got in touch, tried some of their stuff. You might have seen the other two videos that I've done because this is the third of the three that I've got on the shelf. Um, but before I tell you what this tastes like, if you didn't see the stream with Vin, um, let me give you an indication there. Let me give you an indication, not an indication, let me give you a bit of information even about the distillery itself. The oft mispronounced Le Cech is the original Scottish Gaelic name of the Tobermory Distillery, founded in 1798 by John Sinclair on the northern coast of the Isle of Mull. The distillery has had a very chequered history. After a decent start, it closed in 1837, laying silent for 41 years before reopening in 1878. Multiple owners tried to make it work in that time before Distillers Company Limited mothballed the site in 1930, where it stayed dormant again until a business consortium purchased it in 1972. At this point it was renamed Tobermory after the town in which it resides, and for those of you with children you'll recognise part of the town as Balamori, the location of a very popular kids show from a few years back. And yes, that was popular stand-up comedian Miles Jupp in an early role as Archie the Inventor. Only 10 years later, Tobermory closed again, and some of the buildings were turned into holiday flats. It seemed like the poor distillery had run its course for good, but Burn Stewart Distillers, who also owned the Deanston and Bunnahaven distilleries, bought the site in 1993 with the full intention of relaunching it back to glory. The original distillery name Le Cech, which means safe haven, is the branding used for peated expressions from the distillery, and was first launched in 2007 as a 10 year old bottling following consumer demand. The Smoke and Glory 13-year-old release by Heroes and Heretics was distilled in March 2007, with maturation taking place in a first fill ex-bourbon hogshead, before 276 bottles were filled at an ABV of 53% in August 2020. So, let's see what it tastes like if I can actually get the top open. Let me see if I can get the top open without dropping bottle or glass. Uh, so, first fill bourbon hogshead. Um, so not one of the bigger barrels uh, and we only have uh, 276 bottles bottled at 53% which I don't think is cash strength I think it has been diluted very very slightly so as I said earlier um, Le Cech is one of my all-time favorite distilleries it's uh, not quite up there with Le Cech in terms of all of them are amazing but most of them tick every box that I love about a heavily peated whiskey um, so uh, if you watch the stream with Vim PF, um, the live stream we did a, a month or so ago, you probably got an indication of what I thought of it, although we didn't really go in depth into what it tastes like because we were too busy having a natter. Let's see if we can go into what it actually tastes like. So on the nose, straight away, the classic, I always liken Le Cech to smoked meats on a barbecue. It's got smokiness to it, but it's a meaty smokiness, but it's a slightly sweet barbecue note as well. It's like you're cooking like really good thick meaty sausages, proper sausages from a butcher's, but you've also kind of like layered a bit of barbecue sauce on it and they're smoking, kind of you've got them quite high above the grill, almost on one of those barbecue smokers. So you get that sweet smoke meat element kind of all going on in one go. But then there's also a slight kind of like saltiness as well. There's a slight maritime edge. So it's like you've got that big barbecue smoker, but you're on the beach. So you've got that sort of sea air element mixing in with all of those sweet, smoky, meaty barbecue flavors on it. It's absolutely lovely. Oh, it's so good. And it keeps evolving, it keeps changing. It's just, you know, one of the things I love about Le Cech is the nose, the continual kind of like sweet, smoky aromas that it brings is just, oh, I love the stuff. Really, really good. And that carries on onto the palate. But what you also get is because this is a first filled bourbon hogshead, you get a lovely creamy note to it as well. There's a beautiful mouthfeel to it. It's quite rich and silky, but you get this kind of creamy element underlying that meaty, smoky barbecue-ness. It reminds me actually a little bit of 
it wasn't a lemon meringue pie, it was a dessert I had that involved meringue, but you basically kind of like smoked it in a barbecue. So it was, was it a pecan pie that had meringue on it? It was over in the States, and it was like a, a pecan pie, but they put meringue on top of it as though it was a lemon meringue pie, but replaced the lemon curd with pecans. So you had a slight nuttiness to it as well. But they essentially, were, were, instead of doing a blowtorch on the meringue to get that kind of crispy coating, they actually put it into uh, a barbecue smoker. So it sort of crisped up the outside, but you got this slight smokiness within the meringue. It was such an unusual flavor and absolutely delicious. And this is kind of similar. You get that sort of, mouthfeel of creamy egg white meringues you know like soft meringue and that slight sweetness but you also get that lovely kind of barbecue smoky element to it as well it works brilliantly you're probably watching this going oh that sounds a bit weird and off-putting but it just works brilliantly and that's that first feel bourbon influence along with the classic characters that Lachette brings it's absolutely fantastic Another great whiskey that kind of evolves the more that you drink it. You start to get some pepperiness coming through. There's a little bit of like, you know, fish and chips and salt and vinegar. It, it keeps changing all the time. And it's one of the things I love because it, you just kind of get like different levels of it. You know, on that mouthful, it was more of a peppery element towards the back of it. You still get that sweetness on it. Less of the meatiness, it's slightly more bitter. Uh, you don't really get much oak in there. Another one. Now we're back to a slightly more maritime feel. There's more of a saltiness. And obviously with the intensity of the, the peatiness that's in there, you do get a finish that goes on for a good long while. And again, that finish keeps evolving. It kind of ebbs and flows in terms of like smoked meats, salt, sea salt, black pepper, salt and vinegar crisps, all sorts of things going on with them. It's one of those th uh, great whiskies that you don't need a lot in the glass, but you will enjoy it for a long time. 53% and I don't feel like it needs water. I really genuinely don't think you need to add water to this. My general rule of thumb is if it's over 50, try it first, see what you think, then add water if you think it needs to. And I don't think this does. I genuinely think if you put some water in this, it's just gonna knock that complexity down. I, I really do think that that's why my gut feeling is this is not cash strength. They've diluted it down a little bit to get it to potentially bang on ABV. It's a wonderful whiskey. Admittedly, I am biased because I love the distillery, but I have the Sinclair series, which is uh, the Rioja cast finish from the distillery itself. I have the Connoisseur's Choice, which is the Hermitage finish. I don't need another Lecheque on the shelf. You know, as much as I love Lecheque, business hat on, I'm owning my own business, do I need another Lecheque? Only if it's really, really good. Price point, $96.99. And there will be some people going, ooh, hang on, that's a little bit steep. No, absolutely not. If I thought it was too expensive, I definitely would not have got it in. But I've got the Connoisseur's Choice, which is bottled at 46%, which is a 12 year old at 75 quid. And if you've seen my other video in terms of my the, the two the checks that I did, you'll know I think that is a really fair price. And I think this is a fair price as well. You know, if you wanna have arguments about price points and where whiskey is at the moment, go right ahead. But I'm looking at the market right now, what there is in comparison, the age, the ABV, the flavor profile, how enjoyable it is, not a problem selling it at that price at all, any day of the week. I think well, now I've got three Lecheques at three different price points that actually are worth the price points that I've got them at. They are fantastic, such a good distillery. Um, it gives you a slightly different presentation because you don't have that red wine element, but actually the distillery is good enough to hold its own. And that first fill bourbon, just that sweet kind of like egg, soft meringue, egg white feel to it, really does make a hell of a difference. It's absolutely superb stuff. It's so, so good. If you can't tell by my utter, utter ramblings. So again, not many bottles on the shelf. There are only uh, 276 bottles in existence. I have a couple. I don't know how many that they've got left if I were to sell out, and I've only got three on the shelf at the time of recording. Uh, so if you are interested, do uh, go on our website. You can purchase from www.spiritspecialist.com. We offer nationwide delivery around the UK, uh, and you can come in our shop, uh, choose, click, and collect, or just come in, have a little bit of a try of it while I've got some left if I don't drink it all myself, um, and uh, purchase a bottle from me in person. It would be very nice to see you. Um, Heroes and Heretics, you know, really good. As I mentioned on one of the earlier videos, website, bit of like marketing nonsense and not really much kind of substance to it, but 
What matters is the liquid inside the bottle and they are all fantastic, absolutely brilliant and I highly recommend them. So hopefully I will see you or hear from you soon in order to purchase a bottle, which I highly recommend you do. That's me done, I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.